John Riddell is uh, one of the more uh, famous alumni from Bethany College. He was born in Michigan in 1885 and came to this uh, college early in the 20th century. He was a graduate of the class of 1909. Uh, in the next 20 years, uh, he pursued a career in education in Illinois. He became a math teacher and was a coach as well. And by the late 1920s, he was becoming increasingly uh, dissatisfied with some of the equipment that football players were uh, using, in particular uh, their cleats, uh, but also their helmets, which in those days were made out of leather. And so in 1929, he quit uh, his job as a teacher and uh, founded a company that began manufacturing uh, uh, football equipment. Uh, he was early to recognize the enormous potential for uh, the plastics industry, uh, which was just now in the 1930s becoming, uh, on, becoming mainstream. Uh, in the United States, and by 1939 he had designed a helmet uh, to replace the leather helmets, uh, which was to become the prototype, really, for all football helmets uh, in the modern era, in the post-World War II era. Uh, his company grew by leaps and bounds, along, uh, working alongside his son. By the early 1970s, uh, virtually all of the uh, football teams in the National Football League used uh, helmets by Riddell. Uh, with the exception of the New England Patriots, uh, who were probably the Boston, still the Boston Patriots at that point. Um, and, of course, he retired uh, a very wealthy man. Uh, indeed, it used to be uh, that virtually all helmets uh, had that Riddell uh, logo on the back that was printed across a, a piece of, uh, pl uh, actually, plastic or leather that slipped out behind the back of the helmet. Uh, and so, as we say, Beth, uh, Mr. Riddell becomes one of Bethany's uh, most prominent uh, alumni. This information was sent to President D. Dwayne Cummins from Gene Cobb, who was the previous archivist. It is about John Tate Riddell, who was an alumni class of 1909, and this was mailed out in January of 1991. Um, it's really all the information we have on Mr. Riddell from the archives. So John Tate Riddell came to Bethany as a sophomore from Holland, Michigan at the beginning of the academic year, 1906-1907. Alumni records do not reveal when he first attended college, but the three years leading to his graduation from Bethany College in 1909 with a Bachelor of Arts in the Classical course were filled with a wide range of activities. On October 29, 1906, Mr. Rydell was elected an officer in the Neotrophin Literary Society, of which he was a new member, and on May 27, 1907, he was chosen by society members to be their marshal for the ensuing year. He remained an active Neotrophian through his senior year, serving as president on March 15, 1909. Due to a serious injury early in the fall of 1907, he was unable to fulfill his hope of becoming active on the football team. But he was pictured in the yearbook with the basketball team, having served as a regular substitute for the squad. The Kodak of 1908 cites that he was a man of great intellectual power and athletic ability, a nice boy, a man to be relied upon. John Tate Rydell graduated from Bethany College in the spring of 1909, but is listed as a matriculate for the following year. There are no clues as to the certainty of his having participated in the Master of Arts degree program, but this may be a logical speculation. Alumni records show Mr. Rydell to have settled in Chicago, where he established Rydell, Inc. He died July 3, 1945, but Bethany College continues to use the athletic equipment manufactured by Rydell, Inc. and tested in the period of its development and design during the tenure of Coach Knight. Photographs, alumni records, and a letter from Wilbur Cramlett and photocopies of various aspects of Mr. Rydell's involvement at Bethany College are included with this report. This has been extremely important as far as when you look at even games on the college level, the Division Three level, it's just becoming more physical. You've got a, a better form of athlete on every level. You talk about Division Three, you talk about Division One up to the pros, even at high school level, you've got better athletes. So you've got bigger guys, faster guys, going at each other harder. Um, you know, that we had those problems for a long time, 10, 15 years ago, when you're talking about concussions and you're seeing all of that with the suits and, and things of that nature, especially in the NFL, when, when you're talking about <clears> been extremely important excuse me, for the us. 70s and 80s. You look at even players on the college level, Division Three level, it's neurological issues and things of that nature. More physical. 
I think uh, a, a better this, the helmet continues, continues to shape and evolve, evolve as well as the game continues to shape and evolve. Division one, division two, division three, even high school level, you got better head athletes. trauma go down. Yeah. I think you'll see concussions go down, and I think it's uh, one of the most important things that can happen in, in, in football today. Yeah, I think uh, when you talk even in the 30s and 40s when they had just the leather helmets, it wasn't exactly, uh, they didn't really keep that concussion from happening. They didn't keep the, uh, the trauma with the head. They didn't keep the brain from moving. They didn't keep uh, any sort of um, contact like that from, from happening. So I think with the, the plastic helmets, especially built in with the, the webbing kind of that's inside the helmet is, is helped to keep um, well, players safer as far as the you know the high speed collisions and contacts, and I think that's uh, they'll I'm sure they'll find something along in the future that's better than plastic. But for now, it's the best that they can do at the moment. Well, I think you, you, when you add the plastic helmets, uh, the modern day helmets, especially when you when you talk about the penalties that are being called now as well, I think. Um, that's what most leagues are looking at now is, is player safety and, and that's paramount as far as, as the game goes is they want to see players stay on the field longer and, and have a better quality of life after football. And so I think uh, having the new new versions of the helmets as well as like I said with the, with the penalties that are being called, the way the game is being officiated, uh, those are both going to um, really continue to help make strides in, in player safety. Football helmets have seen many changes through the last several decades. Most of those changes are due to safety regulations. Uh, the main purpose of the football helmet is to protect the player's head and, and uh, limit the possibilities of concussion. So we've seen many, many changes through the years. Um, we've seen the helmets grow larger. Uh, we, we've seen today's helmets that have uh, more cuts and uh, slats in them to allow for better air circulation and uh, they've, while the helmets may appear to be bigger at times uh, they have also gotten lighter uh, through uh, technology which is uh, again helped the safety aspect of it and uh, as the concussions and, and the studies on concussions and, and the effects that they have both short term and long term to football players uh, those, those studies are going to uh, change results all the time and so you're always going to see changes to football helmets and you're going to see uh, constant upgrades to the helmets to try to protect the players and, and increase the safety of the players while they're on the field. Well, back in the old days when they wore the old leather helmets, there obviously wasn't a whole lot of protection, but uh, the game was a little simpler back then. You didn't have the giant men that you do today uh, running at the speeds that they do. So the helmets have uh, evolved through the years, and, and with today's plastic helmets and the materials that they use, again, uh, the technology is, is top notch. Uh, they're constantly finding ways to tweak and improve the helmets and, and find ways to make it safer, but lighter at the same time, and but still be able to protect a player's head and brain from uh, some sort of tra traumatic blow. So uh, the, the changes are, are, again, they're going to be constant, and uh, you know the, the helmet of today will be. Uh, changed and, and they'll have a new style of helmet for next year so you know the plastic helmets um, have done a tremendous amount to improve the safety for players um, but there's always improvements that can be made and, and so you're going to continue to see those uh, not only through the next year but through the decades. With the advancements of the helmets, uh, the materials of the actual helmet itself, the plastic helmet as well as the padding inside of it, um, it cushions the blow from, uh, go from a head-to-head -head collision or even as a, a player's head hits the turf, which causes just as many concussions as an actual head-to-head -head contact. Uh, we, we saw it this past week in, in a football game between the Ravens and the Rams where a player's head, back of his head hit the turf and, and he suffered a concussion from that. So, um, you, you know, while there have been great advancements in uh, the safety of, of, with the helmets, there's always going to be ways to improve it. But uh, certainly with what's been done to this point and 
what's going to continue to be done. There's going to be, continue to be injuries, but uh, with the advancements that, the, that they've made, um, you know, hits of today that used to be head-to-head -head would certainly have caused a concussion five years ago, even two years ago, but the advancements that they've made with the padding and protection have really helped the players to be able to suffer more blows and continue to play without injury.